Hello and welcome to another Come Fly With Lee video. Today you join me on a solo flight where I want to share with you the planning aspect that goes into the flight beforehand and then we'll carry out the flight itself. So here you can see the program Sky Demon, something I've mentioned previously in videos, mostly surrounding the actual onward navigation or use of Sky Demon coupled with a GPS signal. Here we can see Sky Demon in the planning stages. Um, we can see many airfields surrounding uh, Slape. We can see uh, smaller civil airfields. We can see military airfields such as RAF Shawbury and Turnhill. And we can see the larger commercial airports such as um, Birmingham International Airspace, East Midlands, and going into Manchester and Liverpool control zones. However, on today's flight, what I need to do is find a grass farm strip to fly into. Now, if we look at the Sky Demon map, uh, these typically tend to be the green airfields marked on here. And if we look about 20 miles to the north northeast of Slape, we find Dairy House Farm. Now, I've never flown into here before, but we can use Sky Demon to obtain some more information to make sure it's safe to conduct the flight. So within Sky Demon we have some airfield information. Now for some, such as these farm strips, that information is very basic. Um, for other airfields and for some strips we can get Poolies information uh, which provides more in-depth detail. However here on this uh, Sky Demon chart we can see the orientation of the airfield, the runway numbers, any air field frequency, uh, the circuit direction and we can also see that um, runway 3012 is marked at being 520 meters in length and 10 meters wide. Now I tend to verify this information uh, via a second source and I will use um, Google aerial maps to measure this out. So here on Google we can see the airfield, we can see the orientation, we can see the surrounding trees and the runway orientation. There's also the measuring facility within Google Maps and we can measure the length of the strip and indeed it is shown as 520 metres. So this gives me some further reassurance. So next I will use Sky Demon and within the program there is a facility to check um, pilot notes and this is from previous pilots that have flown into the airfield who can comment freely on uh, what their experience has been good and bad and this can allow pilots to make uh, informed decisions as to whether or not they actually visit this airstrip. So here are the pilot notes that led me into choosing to go to Dairy House Farm. First of all the pie shop closes at 2 p.m. on a Saturday uh, but there's a local pub that serves nice meals. We've got some information about the frequency that's uh, in use at the strip. Uh, we've got a lovely place with some ace people there. It's free but make a contribution in the cabin and don't overfly the neighbours. It's owned by a generally nice chap that loves flying and nice people. The airfield has a slope on it and is indefinitely easier to land on 3-0 than 1-2. So that's useful information to know. Uh, we've got a note from the Chief Flying Instructor John Bradbury uh, about not doing any overhead joins. Um, there's a blind call on their frequency uh, so basically you're not going to get any reply from anyone and that landing is free uh, but donations to charity are welcome. And finally that it's a lovely friendly airfield, use large circuits and it's a wonderful pie shop on the main road about 200 yards to the left. So quite a few comments about this pie shop, I think we're going to go and have to have a look and uh, get ourselves some pies. So I've put myself a route together, uh, not too far in terms of travel wise, about 20 miles. And if we zoom in a little bit closer we can see the route. So we're going to depart north, staying outside of Shawbury's mats. And if we zoom in a bit closer we'll be able to see that's the dotted blue line. We're going to run up to Fenny Moss, across to Whitchurch and up to Nantwich and Crewe. Here you can see I've put some reference points on. I'm going to use a paper chart on my lap as well um, and these are going to be my references for that navigation. So the black circle denotes a place called Fenny Moss. We're going to route to the west of that so that's going to run down the right hand side of the aircraft. Once we're there we're going to turn more northeasterly and we're going to route uh, to the north of Whitchurch and over the Shropshire Union Canal which crosses the A49. Then we're going to turn a bit more easterly uh, where we're going to run near to Combermere Abbey before turning a more north northeasterly um, towards Nantwich and into Dairy House Farm which is just to the west of Crewe. 
So as you can imagine it's a August day, the weather is uh, beautiful and we've got very light winds, if anything northerly, northwesterly and so we line up on runway 36, start our pre-rotation and uh, get ready to depart. Now there's a lot more checks um, and further details that goes into pre-flight planning than what I've gone through so far in this video. I've already had to call ahead to the farm, um, speak to the flying school instructor, um, obtain something that's called PPR, which is prior permission required, um, confirm that the airstrip is in a landable state. Um, there was some mention that there is a fence to the left hand side of the landing area just to watch out for. It's a electric fence of some form to keep the cattle in. Um, and there's also other things in which go into it, checking the weather details, etc. But I wanted to share with you some of the information um, within the Sky Demons planning software that goes into it. So we've now taken off on runway 36, and we can see um, that we've just turned right off heading uh, for noise abatement procedure here at Slape. And uh, we can see some of the farm tractors down there below that are um, working the fields, given the time of year that it is. Um, we continue our climb out towards the north, uh, we leave Slape Frequency and we contact Shawbury. We'll be staying outside of Shawbury's uh, military aerodrome traffic zone but we will speak to them and obtain a basic service. So if we look at the map here then, uh, we are routing north and we are looking for Fenimos, that's the area marked by the black circle, a notable different terrain uh, that keeps us parallel but outside of Shawbury zone and when we get there we're going to be heading off on a new heading. So here we go, just to the right of us, Fenimos. We can see it stands out like a sore thumb. Fantastic for a aeronautical navigation feature. Um, not the best thing to necessarily fly over a bog. Um, however, in relation to its official term, it's known as Fenny's Wixel and Bettisfield Mosses. Now, according to a website of ShropshireGreatOutdoors.co.uk, a um, bit of information about these bogs um, we can find that it actually straddles the English border near Whitchurch and Shropshire and Wrexham in Wales. Uh, it lies one of the largest, best raised bogs in Britain. Um, it's got 18 species of bog moss, uh, 29 species of dragonfly and damselfly. Uh, 670 different species of moth and 32 different species of butterfly have been recorded. There's adders, common lizards thriving in the area. There's been a restoration of the water levels um, which has given rise to major changes in the bird life of the mosses. Um, some 166 bird life being spotted and uh, the mosses themselves uh, give a stronghold to uh, water voles thriving in the area. So there's a bit of background information for you, um, but we can certainly see that um, it stands out absolutely more so than anywhere else in the surrounding terrain. So we're going to stay away from it, we're not going to fly over it should we have an engine failure, we don't want to be putting down into a bog. Um, we're going to alter our course slightly round and now travel across towards the Shropshire Union Canal. Uh, where it meets the A49. So as we head in that direction, um, coming up on the nose, we've got the border between Wales and England. Um, just as we get to that area, we can uh, see Iscoid Park. Now, from a bit of research that I've done into Iscoid Park on their website, um, it was actually um, been in the Godsall family since 1843. Um, Philip and uh, Susie Godsall took over the running of the house from uh, their father Philip um, in 2009 uh, when it was in much needed restoration. Just down here to the left of us we can see uh, the Eastcoid Mansion. Um, they lived in the house, uh, they still live there today with their three children and they run it as a wedding and events venue. Um, the trees at which we're just flying over now, um, just on their border, uh, that is the borderline of Wales to the left and England to the right. So if we just have a little look on the map here we can see that we're looking for the 
Shropshire Union Canal to be running parallel to the A49 on the right. Uh, our track takes us just to the right of these, so they should be down the left hand side. And then the canal crosses over the road and heads off in a north easterly direction. So we can see the uh, Shropshire Union Canal to the left of us here and to the right of the canal is the A49, quite a prominent road and we can see that they are running indeed parallel to each other and we are to the right of those features. Um, so we can confirm that we are in the correct position. Ahead of us the canal crosses over the road and then the canal continues round to the right off in a more uh, northeasterly track. Um, this sort of crossing over each other is uh, the reference point that we're looking for to uh, turn slightly a bit more to the uh, northeasterly. And uh, you can see at the moment I'm just looking around, just making sure that you know everything is where I think it is. We are where we should be, and I'm just cross-referencing um, the two, the the terrain and the the map together. We can just see that we're crossing over the top of um, Coisley Mere. Um, this is uh, glacial origin. Um, we're just over the top of Little Mere, and then off in a bit further a distance, we've got uh, Big Mere. For the next route, uh, we are going to be flying over the Shropshire Union Canal, uh, quite a straight line. To the left of us, there are a set of power lines running parallel with us. To the right of us there is a railway line and then to the right of that we've got the Comamere Abbey and Comamere Water. So this is me uh, flying that route I've just talked you through. You can see I'm flying directly over the top of the Shropshire Union Canal and just to the right there you may have just made out um, the reference that we circled on the map. Uh, if we look around again now, just there, the water and the trees, that's uh, Comamere Abbey, and the water that surrounds it and the trees that surround it. Now, the uh, Comamere Abbey itself is uh, home to Sarah and her husband and her son. Uh, Sarah inherited the estate in 1992. She was the great granddaughter of Sir Kenneth Crosley. Um, the estate itself has got lots and lots of history um, from what I could see. Just partly um, of that is the fact that the estate was used in the Second World War as a, uh, a girls' school. Lots of work has gone on there since to uh, renovate it and bring it up to uh, modern standards. Um, but it's a location of where you can get married um, as well as them hosting multiple other events. So just behind us we have Nantwich and we're overflying the road beneath us that leads from Nantwich along to Crewe which is that more populated area that we can see just to the right of the nose. So we are not far from Dairy House Farm, we've already spoken to them on the frequency and when I say them I mean a blind a transmission which has been uh, replied to by an aircraft on the ground. The aircraft has kindly confirmed that the runway supports runway 30. Now this ties in from our prior planning of checking the weather that we knew that it was going to be primarily a northerly northwesterly wind um, which matches. Uh, we fly along the road and start looking out for the field. We can see on the Sky Demon map so we have a good idea of where it is and if you remember uh, we checked Google Maps beforehand so we were having a look at the local terrain and features um, that are going to allow us to spot where we want to go. Now the intention is to do one touch and go uh, followed by one four stop landing but it doesn't quite work out that way and you'll see why. So now we're turning from left base onto final. We can make out the grass strip off at 12 o'clock with a railway line running to the right of it. We can see a number of trees and cables on the approach, one of which uh, a set of cables is just going beneath us now. And remember the intention for this is to do a touch and go. This gives us an idea of what the approach feels like and we can 
contemplate how much landing we're going to need. Thinking about the slope that was commented in the uh, the pilot notes, we can think about uh, where we're going to be taking off and what the climb out looks like for our departure. So that's the intention. Got a tree to the left. We can see some cows to the left. A bird just flying past. Lots of things to think about when landing into a farmer's field. It's not got that preparation really that a uh, normal full airport would have, but this particular field has been well looked after by the farmer. We can see the pilot uh, and the aircraft just down to the left of us there, that yellow aircraft that spoke to us on the radio, and we can make out Dairy House Farm there to the left. So we're climbing out to the right of runway track and if we uh, look at the circuit diagram we can see why. So on runway 30 there's a slight dog leg out to the right um, before proceeding round on a left hand circuit for runway 30 is 700 feet. You'll notice the red areas on the map, these are noise abatement areas. Um, these are areas that um, Dairy House Farm want us to avoid flying over. And this is uh, to help keep the noise down, uh, keep noise complaints to a minimum, which helps uh, keep the airfield being able to operate. So we come round and uh, you join us now on uh, final 430 with intention to land. So on the final approach I'm um, doing my final checks and this includes making sure that the landing area is clear. Now as I mentioned before farm strips present multiple unique hazards that you won't particularly find at a designated airfield or airport and uh, I guess that includes the type of things that you'll find on the runway. So as we get closer I notice that there is indeed something on the runway about halfway down so at this point I've already commenced to go around but I'm not particularly climbing out at this point I just want to make sure I know what it actually is and uh, as we get closer I can see that it's actually a cow that's broken free from the herd that had wandered onto the runway at this point the cow's going in the right direction he's going away from the runway um, however it is in my mind that we've now got a, a loose cow on the airfield uh, the pilot of the yellow aircraft, he's uh, commencing a backtrack uh, for him to take off and anticipates that him doing so will just scare the cow off a bit further. Um, so I commence to go around, we do another circuit and come back in and uh, reassess if we can land this time. So the third time lucky they say, here we go, final approach. Um, cow looks to appear to have cleared the runway. The yellow aircraft has already departed so hopefully that was sufficient enough to scare that cow off and uh, we can see we've got a nice clear approach. You might be able to make out the fence to the left of the runway uh, which is very close to the runway edge which is what the uh, chief flying instructor would warn me of and um, if we just look to the left now we'll be able to see where that cow has actually broken free but he's well clear of the runway. The condition of the strip is great, um, nice short grass, um, there is a gentle slope but nothing to be concerned about in the slightest in the gyro uh, on the day that we've got today. Um, looks in good condition, good length and uh, we just taxi up to the top, come clear to shut the aircraft down there. So just coming clear of the runway now, uh, as I said I've never been here before so just trying to find a spot that's not going to uh, cause any inconvenience to any other pilots that might be arriving. And we've also got to be aware that it is a working farm and there's going to be vehicles moving around. So um, just get the aircraft into a safer position and uh, start the shutdown and then we've got to think about hunting those pies down. So with the aircraft shut down, uh, we've got the rotor tie on now and you'll see on the back seat that I've got a, uh, a storage bag which is very useful to have when you're solo because one thing you don't have a lot of in the gyro is uh, space especially when you've got two people on board so when you're solo and you can carry that on the back seat it's uh, very useful indeed. So I was pleased to be able to uh, meet up with the uh, the landowner and uh, we have a little chat and then he uh, very kindly volunteered himself to go and try and round up the loose cow which uh, I think he had limited success of until uh, he had an extra pair of hands from uh, another farmer with a quad bike later on in the day. 
So the farmer kindly allow me to use uh, the facilities he's got available. Um, if you're thinking of flying in yourself, then uh, there is a toilet there and a hot drinks facility, but uh, this isn't necessarily always available. Uh, I would check with the farmer um, before you use it. Uh, managed to meet his dogs, had some lunch uh, with them outside before having a little walk down the lane. Um, the farmer even asked me if I was coming to uh, get some pies that they they were that well known. Uh, walked down to the pie shop and here they are, uh, put them in the bag ready for the flight home. So uh, this is the takeoff uh, for the flight home, the cow has been uh, secured away. You can see we're airborne quite quickly and uh, start that right hand dog leg turn off to prevent overflying the farm. Uh, the farmer's out there uh, watching the takeoff, so uh, give him a little wave, thank him for his uh, hospitality, and uh, I'm sure I will be back to Dairy House Farm before too long. For those of you that have made it to the end of the video, thank you and I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you'll join me again soon.